Hi guys, Irish Trekkie here, bringing you my review of Star Trek The Official Starships Collection Issue 7 featuring the Klingon Battlecruiser. So, as per normal, we have our magazine and our ship. So, for the time being, we'll just put the ship to one side and I'll give you a little run through of the contents of this issue's magazine. So we have our lovely feature graphic here, very similar to Star Trek The Motion Picture where you have these fantastic battlecruisers coming into contact with Voyager. Super, super close ups, very, very high level of detail for the time and um, yeah, a very pleasant cover indeed. So let's just get to the meat and veg. So we have our standard specifications list along with instructions on how to mount her. Then we have our Klingon Attack Battlecruiser uh, background. Again, fantastic graphic. Like It's just, if I can do it justice, if I can zoom in. There we go. The graphic on this is unbelievable. I never noticed the little, little moustache looking thing here. It's cool. And our big torpedo bay. Massive, massive. So we have a feature there on the impulse drive and uh, the level of detail here. Again, haven't gone through the contents uh, hugely on this, but I should figure it's very much like the other issues, giving you some nice insights as to the origin and background of the Klingon Battlecruiser. So we have some shots here of various um, movies. And again, you have the super close-up that you would have been familiar with in the motion picture. Uh, Viger, there's actually the... Oh no, that's with the different... different that has the Excelsior in the back. And the zero G... Zero G Moida that happened in um, the feature films of Star Trek as well. So yeah, very, very good little section there. So this section is on the systems of the Klingon. So again, the computer terminals, the graphics. So you had a very distinctive Klingon red um, base tone um, visual effects that you'd have in all their bridges and their systems. So again, giving you a kind of skeletal view of the battlecruiser. Uh, nice side on image there, fully loaded with Klingon. Uh, I do not speak Klingon, I have no idea what this is saying, but it looks pretty, so yeah, we'll deal with it. So, systems and display and data feeds as per usual. So, we have our little uh, points of interest. So, again, highlighting the bridge, nacelles, the impulse sections, the torpedoes, destructor bays as well. Again, focusing mainly on the destructor cannons here in the extra tidbit information. So I have a nice shot of it there firing on DS9 by the looks of it. Maybe Terra. Yeah, DS9. Yeah. I from I remember. Yeah, I'm going to be slaughtered by the Star Trek geeks out there, but sure. I'm just doing my duty. So here we go. Our little background into designing the battlecruiser. Nice retro shot there of them actually making the film models for the movie as well. And again, we have a super detailed graphic, two page spread, which I always like. If I can get it in focus for you guys to enjoy. Cool. I don't want to ruin it. You'll see these in your own magazines, hopefully when you get them. So kind of similar to the other magazines, we do see the kind of evolution of design. So the little sketches to the kind of more detailed sketches and so on and so forth. Um, some information there, um, graphic design of how the bridge may appear, which is very similar to what it does turn out to be. Very engineery, kind of no frills, typical Klingon, all about the fights, all about the glory. And then we have the battle cruiser on the filming section. So you have your uh, support mount, which obviously you wouldn't see in the movies. So I'd give you that long cinematic um, intro that you'd be familiar with with the motion picture as well. Check it out. It's okay movie. It's got some great shots on it. There we go. Viger kicking its ass. Saying sayonara. And then some more information there. I feel like I'm muffling today. I apologize. I apologize. And then we have our on-screen uh, information of the particular battle cruiser, And some trivia. Nice little bit there that you can see that Klingons were named after Lieutenant Wilbur Klingon who served with Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry in the Los Angeles Police Department. Didn't know that. Very interesting. And a little sneak peek at Nick's issues. Excelsior and CC 2000. So this is the one that Sulu captained, not the NX. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that one. Love that ship. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, magazine done. Super graphic on the back. Put that to one side. And 
I don't drop it. Here is our Klingon battle cruiser. Now I've seen some comments online that there has been some pictures where there's been painted decals on here and they have gotten back to people who uh, comment like that. This is a model that represents how the ship looked in the motion picture. So the motion picture, I believe, and from what I've seen, didn't have painted decals. So it is detailed, but not painted as certain images have portrayed itself. So let's get at this and we'll see what she's like. Okay. Did you pack these very well? Okay, now this is on a long neck, so don't break. you to one side put you to one side and you good luck okay so cling on battle cruiser time focus very unusual ship ah can you focus at all there we go there we go nice ship Never been super fan of Klingon ships in general, but they have attached a lot of detail. You can see along the neckline here, and especially on the command section, you get kind of that detail reminiscent of the motion picture. You had those kind of wing details then along the drive arms here leading to the nacelles. Not a fantastically vibrant ship, but I'm sure that's what Klingons are. Very practical to a fault. So we have our dry section then at the back. Hope I'm doing justice with this today. It's an unusual shape ship. I like it, yeah. I like the way it's um coloured like a kind of lighter um just kinda of like battleship kind of grey with a very dark kind of uh, tone just highlighting um accentuating the levels of details there. Um let's just get the rear of it there so you have your input section and your front sensors array and your disruptors so you have your disruptors there if i can get it flipped around for you guys would it be nice if it was a little bit red but again red would have meant it was actually in the process of firing so this is how it would have cruised like um very back heavy now this one they're normally always front heavy but that was always to be expected with the design of the ship see how close i can get the level of detail here for you here we go hope you can see that there guys fly by yeah i like it you know by itself nah give or take but in the collection you know it does have its own place i can see it um occupying a nice little stand beside all the rest of the guys and it will kind of put it into context the evolution of design because there will be the next generation version of the battle cruiser the vorcha class coming out as well which shares a lot of design philosophies but then you have that green and um, paint scheme with the kind of forked head on it as well almost forgot how to show you what it looks like on the stand stupid stupid so let's have a look at what this guy looks like okay this fits in very sadly onto the stand again you have that upward swooping motion very similar to um Voyager, just to kind of show you what the angle of uh, attack is on that one. It's sitting flush down. Very solid, very cool little model. If I put that there and if I compare it with the Warbird. Because the Romulans did share technology with the Klingons and vice versa. So there we do. Two very different design philosophies, two very different paint jobs and two very different scales, but two great little models so yeah that concludes my review of issue 7 of star trek starships collection hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for your support over the past uh, number of videos uh, much appreciated i'll keep cracking them out as many as i can if you have any requests or any feedback on the videos that you'd like me to change by all means um feedback is good and it is requested so yeah cool Cheers, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you for Excelsior on issue 8. Have a good one. Bye.